Hey everyone, it's Josh J. Vent the Chanda Minis, East Orlando, Florida. This video is going to be on taking apart these CT70 KO triangular shaped speedometers and refurbing them. So let's go ahead and just start taking it apart step by step. Right off the bat, we'll just define four speed and three speed. They're the same speedometer internally. It's the inlay that's different. So this one's a three speed. It's got the three gear sweeping indicator for shifting. The four speed will have, uh, you know, four shifts points. But other than that, internally we're all the same. So if you got a four speed trans or a four speed speedometer or a three speed speedometer, all this will work the same for you. So we're rebuilding this or refurbing or just doing some repairs if your glass is broken. This is stainless steel, this bezel here. So stainless steel can be sanded and reworked and repolished. As long as you got enough thickness in the gauge of the steel, you can kind of clean up any imperfection on here by sanding it and then polishing it. But CHP, the company in Texas, classic Honda parts, uh, they sell some stuff to rebuild your speedometer. So they got the inlays. Like I said, you can do, you can either, you can convert yours from a three speed to a four speed or vice versa. But this is a three speed inlay, then you get the four speed inlay. They sell this little decal that's the uh, Nippon Siki. That's how you say it. A little decal that you can replace on this white face plate. They do sell the white face stamp steel that's behind her, this white plate, but I don't need it. They have a little plastic uh, indicator light that you can replace if you need. They sell their own stainless steel stamped bezel retainer. You got all your rubber. That's for the base of the base to the headlight bucket. This is an internal rubber seal. And then they have this smaller rubber seal. So you can get all that stuff over at CHP. Also they sell glass. If you need new glass, that's inside of here is some glass. Alright, some of the bare tools you'll need for the process is a, a sturdy workbench or surface, solid surface, because you're going to be doing some hammering. I have a liner here that you would put in a toolbox. You get this up at Harbor Freight if you want. It's got some a little bit of give, which is going to help cushion when we're doing the process of resealing the bezel, rebending that metal and pushing it back. Quarter inch punch, or a little bit over six millimeters. This is a paint uh, can opener. I did grind down the tip to make it a little sharper. And then your hammer. Those are kind of the bare essentials for the project. Before you start pushing and prying on this, get your soft pad on, on your bench top so it has some cushion to sit in because you're going to have some pressure. You're going to be pushing down on this, prying. You don't want to break your glass if you're reusing it because that's a lot of pressure on that glass. Once you open it up, you'll see what I mean, how it's held together. is going to start disassembling. So this is a rubber seal that is in between the speedometer and your plastic bucket. So we just take that off. This one's old. It just broke. Now we can reveal the lip that holds that bezel on, clamps it down. We have this little lip here. And then this is the tool that you'll use. That's why I sharpen the edge because you want to get in and under this pretty quickly, effectively, and the sharpening this tip helps. So we're going to get under there. So if you're going to reuse yours, obviously be very gentle with rolling this lip back up. I'm just going to work your way around. So it helps to push it away and then kind of rotate it. See how it starts to push that bent over lip tab back out of the way because that's the only way you're going to get this thing to release. So push away, turn, turn, it starts to lift that lip out. So once you get those tabs start to go upright you can use a flathead and just finish the job off.
this thing's probably just ready to pop out at this point so you don't want to fight it so just keep tweaking it until you know it's really gonna just come out pretty effortlessly like that you don't want to fight this if you're fighting to pull it up you don't have these bent farther enough so just kind of like I said use this screwdriver as your last tool to really get those things straightened up and work your way around uh, one step at a time here it's not a race so now we're ready just to lift and separate our bezel and the glass is going to be there I'll probably just let me flip it around for you actually we'll look at it from this perspective bezel comes off you got your metal stamping that's part of the bend this up so I can get this part these parts separated but just the tip you know if you're reusing this my tip is that that line that you see on the base of this bezel is the fold line so as long as you're keeping your wrench or whatever tool kind of in this zone you're not affecting this area that's the visible part you're gonna have that rubber seal come back so I'm gonna use some um, pliers here and not go past that that fold and keep bending up as long as you're not going past that you're not going to affect the area you're going to see but I do need to obviously bend this a little more so I can get these parts separated so we just have a visual of how this is assembled separate these pieces here stainless bezel gasket A little recess pocket this glass goes into. There's your glass stamped steel and then internal seal again this little wafer seal sits on the lip of this and then we have access to our bezel and we'll take this apart to show you what's beyond this. We're going to have to pull this needle off. you got to be very gentle with this. There's a little thin rod that's on this. So you don't want to turn it and tweak it or you'll bend the rod it, it is uh, press fit on. Uh, I have a little tool that I use to get it pulled, but you might have to go with pliers. But just be very gentle pulling it up. that popped off you heard it was on there really good so that's why I made that tool it's kind of a bearing puller kind of set up there but uh, all you have is some pliers just be very very gentle without you know tweaking that little rod right there and trying to pull straight up want a visual what I use that little if you can get in there it's basically just a rigid kind of like a pitman arm on a car focus there it's enough for it to wrap around and under this needle and it has a little slit that goes where this little rod is so if that makes sense to you guys you can make that next are these two screws let's get those taken out so now we can take the main plate out And there's your lens, your red lens, if that's all sun faded, you can get this replaced and put the new one in I showed you. And if you're going to change this to a three speed or redo this, you just put the uh, decal from CHP, which I'm not actually going to do it on this one. This is actually really nice and clean. So I'm going to clean this one up and reuse the original part. Same thing with the lens. Everything's good there. So what we have here is our odometer set up, so we're going to go ahead and get this taken out. 
got these three screws here. That's going to hold that odometer setup in there. So I like to use bags when I'm taking apart these small parts. So maybe just get yourself a little Ziploc bag and keep all these little screws and needle and other parts in the bag so they don't go wandering away on you. To start breaking this down, we actually, you got to get these little one, two, three, four, these little, they use some sort of um, tooling to press this metal and then it clamps down on this top plate. So we got to get these removed. Uh, for me, I'll grind a little bit of it off, then I'll free up this top plate, and I'm going to actually just tack, put a little tack weld to bring these metals back together. Uh, if you grind this away and you don't have a welder, you can use some epoxy. you got to wait a while for that to set and cure. Got the ground down and then my suggestion is once you get those clearanced out just to set up pliers on the end of these on the end of this top plate and just wiggle back and forth to help it kind of break loose from the tabs that were holding it and do that on the other side you can A little stubborn but <clears throat> instead of grinding more and more away I'm just gonna use this vise to hold it as I show and just give these main brackets a, a tap down to, to pull that part out all right so we're loose now but I need to now spread this main bracket apart so that I can get this this part up and out because it's tight clearance in there. You can see these circlet pliers. can get this out. Alright, so we have this little spread a little bit wide, but we're going to leave it like that because we're going to assemble it all and then we'll press it back together. It's got a little C-clip in here. It's really small. It's best just to come like maybe with a flathead jeweler and you're maybe you have another one to use too but you don't want this thing flying off too but kind of use two hands to, to get this thing off the shaft So now the C-clip's off the end of the shaft. Now we have some room to pull these dials, these face dials apart. And there's like little planetary gear set up inside of here. So we gotta pull them apart so that we can rotate these uh, face all to zero across the board. And then uh, it allows you to also make the adjustment where you have these little locating um, then brackets here, I guess you'd say that help keep it in in location when it's remounted in the chassis of the uh, odometer body. So we're gonna rotate, kind of pull them apart. Make sure you get the uh, little retaining clips or so 
these metal things in the middle of the zero area, <coughs> excuse me, and then do that for every one of these face dials. <coughs> Here's what that kind of planetary gear thing I'm talking about is in here. But what we're doing when we zero this thing out, we're rotating these locating brackets, I guess. Again, I'll call it. And then make sure they're in the middle with the zeros. And we'll get our last dial on. We can go ahead and put our C-clip back on and then our external gear that meshes with the uh, gear that's still on the main bracket of the chassis. So when we're putting your other C-clip in, push with your thumb the shaft, push it out so you can get to the notch that's in the shaft end over here to hold it firmly with your thumb Okay, these are all in alignment as we go down all these little tangs. Let me go ahead and put this back on.